from Jersey City, New Jersey. This is St. Peter's University Basketball on YouTube.com and the Peacocks Network.com. This afternoon, it'll be the Peacocks with a record of 8 up, 10 down, 2 and 5 of the MAC. They're in 7th place, playing host of the Manhattan Jaspers, who are 9 and 10 overall, 4 and 3 in the MAC. They are in 5th place in the league. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Glenn Crooks along with Chris Radicke and St. Peter's after a uh, really a, an annihilation of Quinnipiac at home three games ago have suffered losses at Caniches at Niagara and home to Ryder leading into this game against Manhattan and uh, uh, Chris uh, you know, one of the things you uh, you notice is the number of points surrendered in those three games and some of the very good shooting by the opposition which the way it goes for St. Peter's at times they're uh, always at or near the top of the league in field goal percentage defense and for, scoring defense. For the season, the Peacocks have allowed opponents to shoot 43% from the field. That number has gone up over the course of the last three games at Canisius. The Golden Griffs were able to shoot 52% up at Niagara. The Purple Eagles 49% and Ryder was able to score the ball at ease the other night. They shot it at 55%. So the Peacocks need to shore it up on the defensive end. Those teams obviously could all score the basketball. Today we'll see if the pace slows down. When St. Peter's took on Ryder, the Peacocks were playing at Ryder's pace at times. They took good shots. Devontae Turner, an incredible game. He was matched, though, by Demencio Vaughn. And for Manhattan, they're coming off a home loss. That was on ESPNU to Canisius. The final there was 68-59. to 59. The 129th all-time meeting between St. Peter's and Manhattan. But the Peacocks, who trail in the series with uh, 52 wins only to 76 losses, are uh, have been dominant of late over Manhattan. Over the last two seasons, have swept both season series. So it's a four-game win streak for St. Peter's over Manhattan coming in. We're all rising now at the Anatelli Center for the playing of our national anthem. All right, let's go over the starting lineups for both sides. First for visiting Manhattan. It'll be number three, Xavier Turner, a 5'9 senior guard from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number four, Zane Waterman. He's a 6'9 senior forward from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Number 22, Thomas Capuano. He's a 6'0 senior guard, Hastings on Hudson. Out of Iona Prep, number 23, Rich Williams, a 6'6 senior guard from Brooklyn, New York. And number 33, Paulie Polacap, a 6'8 sophomore forward from Elmont, New York. Manhattan under the direction of Steve Massiello. This is his seventh season. He's got an overall record against St. Peter's, 10-4. and four. For the Peacocks, it'll be zero. Nick Griffin, 6'2 a graduate student. He's a guard from Rockville, Maryland. Number three is Elijah Gonzalez, the 5'9 freshman guard from Portland, Oregon. Number 11, Namdi Enechionia, 6'6 graduate student, a forward from Springfield, Virginia. 
Number 23, Samuel Idowu, a 6'7 junior forward from Brooklyn, New York. And number 24, Quinn Taylor, 6'4 sophomore guard from Amarillo, Texas. Head coach for St. Peter's, John Dunn, this is his 12th season. His overall record against the Jaspers, 9 up and 16 down. Officials for this afternoon, Jeffrey Anderson, Joseph Palach, and Matt Pollum. Just about set to get underway. Uh, starting lineups uh, still being introduced to the uh, the crowd here at Yanatelli Center. Just a season ago, the last meeting between these two, February 12, 2017. St. Peter's with a 19-point victory, 69-50. Uh, led by Quadir Welton, the since-graduated Welton, had 19. Calvin Crawford uh, with 11. Crawford is on the bench tonight uh, for Manhattan. And Chris, uh, with St. Peter's record uh, dropping over the last three uh, conference matches, there are still 11 games to go in the regular season. However, boy, you drop one more, you're 2-6, and six and you're starting to get yourself into the depths of the league. Well, obviously the goal is to get in that top five. Get the buy in the first round of the MAC tournament. Peacocks are going to keep that hope alive. They need to start playing better defensively. This is a huge game for St. Peter's. They have a return matchup on Friday down at Ryder. Ryder, if you saw him on Thursday night, very big, very athletic. A bunch of guys that can score the basketball. So the Peacocks, the early start here. Manhattan played late on Friday night, but the Jaspers in pregame warmups had a lot of energy. We'll see if the Peacocks can get off to the quick start. At Ryder game, Chris mentioned uh, the four-point loss at home, the first home loss of the season for St. Peter's. We are underway. Happy to have you with us. Glenn Crooks, Chris Radicke, Kelly Green, White Trim, that's Manhattan. And they're moving uh, and attacking the basket to our right. Turner with a crossover. Now it's Williams uh, back to Turner up top, and he uh, backs up on his dribble as he looks to maneuver his way past uh, Gonzalez, good help defense from Adobo. Now here's the drive by Waterman, and the running right-hander, no, and he got it off just before uh, the shot clock had expired. Rebound St. Peter's, Gonzalez. He crosses over to the left to uh, get away from uh, his defender, Turner. However, it's a turnover, St. Peter's. Coach Don up off the bench already telling Gonzalez to slow down. Wasn't a perfect pass, one that certainly you think Emetionia can grab. Bumped off the official who was standing out of bounds. So the Peacocks turn it over on their first possession. Turner with a long cross-court pass from right to left. Gets it back. Now drives the lane. Gonzalez there slapping at the ball. Capuano working around a screen from Turner who gets it back. Flips left corner for Williams. Baseline drive. Bottled up inside and shot off the glass is no good. So we're still scoreless a little over a minute into it here in Jersey City. Behind the back. That's... Elijah Gonzalez, the freshman, leads the team in assists. Griffin, left corner in Echionia. Now he puts the ball on the floor. He's free in the lane. Here's the uh, shot. It's blocked. Good weak side help from Pauly Cap. And St. Peter's now with six seconds to shoot. Griffin off the heel of the rim and the long rebound taken by Capuano. He gives to Turner. Flips left side for Williams. Jump pass right corner. Now it's in the hands of Waterman to uh, the right of the circle. And it's Turner now controlling things with 15 seconds to shoot. The lob in. Left block deep is Polycap driving on a doe. Now puts out to Turner. Running right hander and he loops it in. Turner can really score the basketball. Averaging just under nine points per game. His role has changed this season. Last year he averaged nearly 15 points per game. Got about 10 shots per game this year. Just five field goal attempts per contest. Well, that's the first uh, points of the game. Idowu, and he hits from inside the arc, rattled the rim. It's 2-2. Expect a low-scoring matchup when these two teams meet, and there's different philosophies. You don't want to shoot too early in the shot clock. You want the other team to play defense, but if you get an open one, you got to take it. Griffin deflected that pass. It's a turnover. Jaspers taken by Taylor. Taylor cross court for Gonzalez. Right corner Griffin. Pump fake. Drives baseline. Finds it. Dowu, who has scored the first four points for St. Peter's. Excellent job by the Peacocks getting some early offense. Idowu, uh, a real uh, quiet effort against Ryder. Only 13 minutes, five points. And he's now got four. The first three minutes here, St. Peter's up by a bucket. Long three is good for the left side by Rich Williams. 
Turner had the hand up, but Rich Williams, a veteran player, can knock down the three, shooting 40% for the year, his 30th three of the season. And he's coming off a, a real solid performance against Canisius in that home loss on Friday night. Substitutions for Manhattan. We'll check it out in a moment as St. Peter's struggles to uh, inbound the basketball and they turn it over. Manhattan will go deep into the bench. When you play this type of style, you got to keep fresh bodies out there. Turner, just a bad pass. Mack, Walker Jr., and Crawford have entered the game for Manhattan. Again, the Jaspers, 4-3 and three in the league. Uh, they had won uh, two straight leading into that loss against Canisius. They get the ball in. Here's the drive and a bounce now to Crawford. He pulls up a right wing just inside the three-point arc and hands for Williams. Over the top of the defense to the left corner, that's Mack. Williams gets it back, playing catch now with Walker up top. 12 seconds to shoot. In low, good position, Polycap, but his uh, shot is too hard off the glass and a rebound foul called against Manhattan. Polycap getting the good position. Peacock's forming that wall. Team rebounding and over the back foul as Massiello will go back to his bench once again. And Ebube, Ebube, he's got the same first and last name. He's from San Juan, Puerto Rico, a freshman who has seen uh, limited time. He's averaging seven minutes per contest, but he gets into the game early for Manhattan, who will uh, put on the press. Also into the game for St. Peter's in a reserve role. He's on the ball right now, Devante Turner. And man, has he uh, been hot. Turner. Now it's Elijah Gonzalez. Gonzalez bottled up as he looked to drive baseline. And there's Njai who's entered the game for Adowu. Back to Gonzalez. His three ball is short. Glanced off the front of the rim. Taken by Walker Jr. For Manhattan. He's got the ball now. And he points to Crawford to set up the screen. Bounced it once. And a nice overplay by Gonzalez to come up with a steal. He's breaking. And he lays it up and in with a scoop as he gets past the Manhattan defense. Watch Coach Massiello's post-game interview the other day. And he talked about breaking the foul line when getting the ball into the post. Jasper didn't do it there. They turned it over. They had a ton of turnovers on Friday night against Canisius. Gonzalez gives St. Peter's a 6-5 lead. Idowu has the other four points. A fast-paced game here. Off-balance foul line jumper is no good by uh, Walker Jr. And the ball tapped into the right corner where it's chased down by Gonzalez ahead to Turner. Gonzalez back with it now. Angles left. Now uh, loops a pass over the top of the defending Mack to Griffin. Now it's Njai looking to go back door for Gonzalez. He's got it. Made a good catch and then walked with the basketball. And an official's timeout. So uh, both coaches, well, we'll see what they talk about. Maybe uh, on the St. Peter's side trying to settle things down a bit. 15.04 to play first half. It's St. Peter's 6, Manhattan 5 on YouTube.com. All right, our first media timeout has St. Peter's ahead of Manhattan by the score of 6-5. to five. Another metropolitan area game and uh, one of import coming up at 1 o'clock at Iona. They'll host Canisius. Both teams 6-1. and one. The winner there goes into first place by themselves. Peacocks with three turnovers to start. Two by Elijah Gonzalez. Have to point out, this is the first game for Gonzalez and Turner playing against this Manhattan defense. 
They're going to scramble. They're going to try and make you feel uncomfortable. You have to get the ball to the middle of the floor against the zone. And if you're double team, you need to maintain the dribble. Manhattan has the ball after the timeout. Long three by Waterman, and it's Swish from the right wing. 8-6 now, Manhattan. And there's the pressure. And Gonzalez will look to work it out himself using the off-arm right to hold off Xavier Turner and does well to get it into the front court. 20 seconds to shoot. Here's Njai catching the ball at the foul line. Faces the basket. Can't do anything with it. So he goes back outside to Turner. Turner looking to fill up the basket again like he has over the last three games. Pump fake and uh, Enechione in the lane. Here's Gonzalez moving his way past Turner for the pull up and it's good. Excellent use of the pump fake by Gonzalez. Plays with maturity well beyond his years. Elijah Gonzalez, 37 minutes he played at Canisius in a loss on that road trip last weekend. Here's Turner, and he'll shoot over Gonzalez. It's good from the right side. 10-8 Manhattan. And it's Turner running the baseline, trying to sort out the press. And a Manhattan a bit too aggressive. And uh, they're called for a foul. Looks like it's on Rich Williams, his second. And that's not good news for uh, Coach Steve Masiello. Didn't look like there was much contact in the far corner. Williams trying to deny the inbounds pass. He stays in the game. With 13.50 to play, his team up by two. Turner whips a pass uh, into the hands along the right sideline of Quinn Taylor. He was doubled in the backcourt, was Turner, dealt with it well. He's got the basketball now between the circles, around the screen from Adowu, pulls up though. And here's uh, Cameron Jones on the basketball for the first time today. Eight seconds to shoot for St. Peter's as Taylor drives baseline right. Kick out to Jones. Three ball is good for the left corner. An inside out three. Cameron Jones just into the game. Shot ready. Didn't do much on Thursday night against Ryder, but a three there gives St. Peter's the lead. 33% from behind the arc this season. Cameron Jones. Here's Mack with the bounce in low for Waterman. Waterman now doubled right block. So he uh, puts the ball up top for uh, Richie Williams. Now the ball loose on the floor, and it's going to go St. Peter's way as Xavier Turner lost the handle. Over penetration by Turner, patting his chest. My bad. Really didn't have anywhere to go with it. Lost it out of bounds. And talked about the turnovers for Manhattan against Canisius on Friday night for the season. They turned it over about 17 times per game. Well, it's a frantic pace that they create, which uh, sometimes will work against them. Patrick Strizala, he's uh, back into the game along with Calvin Crawford. And uh, Cameron uh, Jones having some uh, difficulty getting it in. Finally bounces to Turner, who uh, hesitates a little bit off the dribble to get himself into the front court. Now it's Jones driving to the left side. His shot is partially blocked by Paula Cap, And the ball last touched by St. Peter's. And there's a case of Manhattan rushing you, getting you uncomfortable. Jones driving to the basket, really went up with it. That would have been an incredible shot if he made it through it off the side of the backboard using the off hand from about eight feet away. Paul DeCap, the 6'8 sophomore forward, he leads the Mac in blocks. And he's got two here tonight. And uh, now, though, he walks with the basketball, trying a post move on the right side. Paul DeCap. Unsure about that whistle. Felt like he kept the pivot foot. He'll go out of the game. Well, we're going to have to keep sharp here, sharp here with Manhattan tonight or this afternoon. If you're an NFL fan, some big games later. Hopefully you're uh, going to get a good one. It certainly looks like here St. Peter's Manhattan from Jersey City. Turner pulls up as he looks to uh, drive past Thomas Capuano. Jones now has it. Goes between the legs as he angles right. Here's uh, the ball into Powell, who makes his first foray towards the hole. And uh, he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Powell looked like he made his decision when catching the ball that he's going to go to the basket. Didn't see the defense there. And Julian picks up the foul, so good job by Manhattan. Help defense, drawing the charge. Among the St. Peter's regulars, those that uh, have played the most or, or majority of the games, Powell averaging the fewest minutes, just a, a little over nine minutes per contest, getting the first half action here. Crawford for three off the rim, no, and it do rips down the rebound, going up high, capturing it with the right hand, and then bringing it into his body, and now it's Turner. 
Taylor, a little bit left of the basket, about 35 feet out to Turner, back to Taylor. Right corner, Cameron Jones. He already has a three, but dribbles out of there all the way across the floor, still on the dribble. Now it's Turner, eight seconds to shoot in this sequence for the Peacocks. Turner with the pull up, but that's about the second or third time we've seen him slip, and this one uh, creates a turnover. He was traveling. I can tell you this, he's not gonna have the room today that he had against Ryder on Thursday night. The Peacocks have turned it over five times already, so this media timeout, Peacocks are going to have to settle it down, but Manhattan playing with great energy considering that they played late on Friday night. And Devontae Turner, who uh, just committed that turnover, coming off a 34-point performance in the uh, loss to Ryder on Thursday night. Officials timeout, 11.29 to play. It is St. Peter's 11 and Manhattan 10 on the Peacocks Network.com. St. Peter's 11, Manhattan 10, big game uh, for both, especially the Peacocks who have lost three in a row after a promising league start. One thing I notice uh, in the Ryder game, Chris, is uh, the, the Peacocks uh, were out-rebounded by 14, 12 offensive rebounds for Ryder, 20 second-chance points. That really was the difference. Ryder very big and athletic. St. Peter's got in foul trouble. That certainly didn't help. So Ryder's a tough team. They have a lot of good players that can really score the basketball. Peacocks had a 12-point lead in the first half. Ryder came back to lead by 15 in the second half. Peacocks never gave up, but just came up a bit short. Here's Turner caught in the paint. His play has resumed. So he'll kick out up top to uh, Capuano. And now it's uh, Waterman posting left. He's triple team. Uh, gets loose of the ball. Now it's Williams with the pull up right in the uh, middle of the foul circle. No one flying in for the rebound. Turner, a uh, ball loose, and it, it shoveled right into the hands of Jones. And Echionia now on the basketball. Talking about Ryder, they have a 6 and 2 record in the league. They're just uh, slightly behind Kadishis and Iona, who are playing this afternoon. Those two squads at 6 and 1. Idowu deep. Little baby hook in the lane, and that's a tough miss for Adowu. He had gotten great position, uh, but it went off the rim. Now Manhattan has the basketball down by one. 10.30 to play, first half. Capuano flips to Crawford. Now holding the ball high over his head is Williams. And here's another three ball for Waterman, his second of the game. You can't give Waterman that much room. Struggling a bit from three-point range, just 28% for the season. Had just three shots on Friday night against Canisius has three field goal attempts already so Manhattan getting him involved in the early going and Waterman is rewarding Coach Massiello. Well he can score the ball Waterman 32nd on the all-time scoring charts for the Jaspers 1,096 points coming into this contest foul called uh, on St. Peter's uh, check that against uh, the Jaspers, so St. Peter's will keep the basketball. Last season, Waterman averaged 14 and a half points per game, averaging 10 this season. Crawford committing the personal. Third team foul for Manhattan, just one foul for St. Peter's. And how about that, an Echionia? In a game like this where Manhattan, like St. Peter's, is going to try and muck it up, if you're open early in the shot clock, you have to shoot a wide open look for an Echionia. 37%. From behind a three-point arc, it gets his first points. Manhattan gets the basketball back, and they're down by one again. It's been tight throughout. Williams with a nice crossover and drive, and that allows a three-point field goal for the left corner, Xavier Turner. Great job by Williams, breaking down the defense. The Peacocks had a collapse, an easy three from the left corner. And the pressure, will it get to St. Peter's, or will it and... Uh, well, they're calling it 10 seconds. And it, it was 21 seconds on the shot clock when the whistle blew. 
Either way, we talked about it earlier. Gonzalez giving up the dribble against that double team. And Peacocks end up turning it over. And that's part of the thing playing against this type of pressure. Might not get you the first couple times, but as the game goes on, it wears you down. Aaron Walker Jr. bounces for Waterman. Sharp shooter up to this point. Has the ball slapped away by Anechionia. Here's Gonzalez against Waterman. Puts it up. No, the follow. No. And now Indolu puts it back in. Coach Massiello can't be happy with his team getting back on defense. There are three Peacocks on the offensive glass. The turnover by Waterman just lazy with the basketball. Held at waist level. Is poked away by Anechionia. Gonzalez looking to get past the uh, much larger Waterman and scoop it in. But... Idowu and Anechionia were there. Idowu with the finish. Off the uh, Manhattan miss. St. Peter's has the basketball again. We're all tied at 16. Idowu in deep. His drive and he's fouled uh, by uh, Pauli, uh, Paula Cap, who uh, didn't believe that uh, much had happened there. But Idowu, who has really improved on his low post game with a good quick move and Paul Cap with a hold. Fourth team foul. It's for Paul Cap. It's his first. Nick Griffin back into the game for Namdi Anechionia. So he joins Adowu, Gonzalez, Taylor, and Cameron Jones, the five for St. Peter's. And the Peacocks with 15 seconds to shoot off the inbound. Here's Idowu getting a position and now traveling with a basketball. Ebube was defending from behind. There have been a couple travel calls where I guess players have slightly moved the pivot feet, but that one was a little difficult to see. 8-10 to play, and we're all tied at 16. Here's Turner with a jump pass along the left sideline. Long three is good by Aaron Walker Jr. A fadeaway. He fell back into the uh, St. Peter's bench as the ball went through the basket. And it's now the Jaspers by three. Griffin will try to tie it up and does so from the right wing. Gonzalez picked it up right over the timeline. Usually you don't want to do that, but he's able to get the pass away, get it to the middle of the floor. And that was a good pass from the high post by Idowu. And... 19-19 now, St. Peter's Manhattan Turner around the screen from Ebube. Patrick Strizala, freshman from really nearby, Bayonne High School. Here's the drive into the paint and the kick out. Turner gets it back. Now he'll try a, a circus shot from the left and putting up with the right and uh, no good, but it'll be St. Peter's basketball. Traveling call on Turner, took an extra step. Peacock basketball after the media timeout. Uh, the walking violations prevail here this afternoon at Yanatelli Center. Uh, we've got a good one. It's 7-17 left of the first half. St. Peter's 19, Manhattan 19 on the PeacocksNetwork.com. Well, we've had eight lead changes already. Four times this one has been tied, including after uh, this uh, last official's timeout. It's 19-19. Both teams shooting the ball well when they can get a shot up. <laughs> Peacock's turning it over seven <laughs> times. Manhattan with six giveaways. Manhattan 7 of 14 from the field. Peacock's 8 of 14. Both teams just blazing from three-point range. The Peacock's 3 of 5. Manhattan 5 of 6. Gonzalez with the nice catch and the feed from Jones who uh, 
Broke pressure in the backcourt. Gonzalez now flips to Njai. Nearly stripping it away from Njai is Mack. Back to Gonzalez. Njai with the uh, ball screen. Now it's Jones. Jones gets loose for a moment. Long pass, deep left corner over the Manhattan defense. Five seconds to shoot. Njai with a force, and he's fouled. That's uh, not a shot you'll normally see Mamadou take, but uh, the shot clock was winding down. Njai bailed out there. That's a bad foul fading away. When he caught the basketball, he was staring at the floor. Peacocks had an open shooter on the weak side of the floor. Njai getting a little lucky. He'll have... Uh, Two freebies now. Will Mamadou Njai just 40% from the line? And he rattles the rim and it goes through on the first take. He'll get another as uh, Devante Turner back into the game for Cameron Jones. And uh, Namdi Enechionia replaces Quinn Taylor. 6.50 to play. St. Peter's by one. Njai is averaging uh, about four and a half points per game. Laurel, Maryland native out of Oakland Mills. Misses the second. And grabbing the rebound in mid lane is Abube, who had uh, committed his first personal to uh, send Njai to the line. Waterman will try to make his third three-pointer. This one contested well by Anechionia. He rimmed it. And now it's Turner for St. Peter's. Wearing their home white with the uh, navy blue trim. They're uh, looking to score on the basket to our left. Here's Gonzalez working his way past Walker Jr. Now Anechionia comes in for the handoff. Turner drives the penetration. He uh, saw to his right. Njai, but the uh, pass was well defended by Manhattan. Turner got into a seam with his elevation. He's got to go up there and shoot that pull-up jumper. Didn't have great spacing on the pass. The Manhattan defense was there, so poor decision by Turner, who has been slow to get going. He has led the Peacocks in scoring over the past three games, including a pair of career highs. He is scoreless this afternoon. The Peacocks are led by Samuel Idowu with half a dozen. Turner to uh, Waterman. Waterman puts the ball on the floor twice between the circles. Now it's Turner. Waterman again. Now Turner will set with seven seconds on the shot clock. Left elbow fadeaway, in and out. But Waterman gets the rebound, he's freed, but he misses the putback. And uh, Gonzalez comes out with it for St. Peter's. Fortunate, Waterman, uh, I think he was uh, shocked how free he was on that offensive rebound and uh, blew the putback. 20-19 St. Peter's. And Jai jump pass to Turner, drives the baseline, puts it up, and... It's an offensive foul called on Turner. Not sure about that call on Coach Dunn. Just with his face in his hands. That, that looked like a foul on Pauly Cap. Turner using that athletic ability to explode to the basket. Pauly Cap was moving inside the semicircle. But still, they say, I guess, Turner leaned in with the shoulder. And, you know, we don't often comment on the officiating but this is a tough one to call team so physical you can call a ton oh, of fouls in right. a game like this so you have to you know figure out how tightly you're going to call it when you're going to call them things of that nature well it's interesting the tempo of this game with the 520 to play just five team fouls for Manhattan three for St. Peter's here's Turner on the drive just outside the uh, arc along the right sideline Gets it back. Now picks up the dribble. Caught a bit. He'll bounce in low to Polycap. And he puts it up. No, but he's fouled as he moved from the right block. Mid lane. Put up an awkward shot. But uh, he will get two freebies. On the initial look into the post on that possession, Njai did a nice job sliding his feet, denying the pass in the Polycap. Then on the second look into the post, he just stood behind Polycap. And the end result, called for the foul. Pauly Cap, nine and a half points per game. Sophomore from Elmont, New York, makes the first. He's only a 55% free throw shooter. Idowu and uh, Crawford back in. Samuel Idowu for St. Peter's, Crawford for uh, Manhattan. 5.04 to play, and that uh, first free throw tied this one up, and we have another lead change as Pauly Cap 
gives uh, the Jaspers the one point lead 21 to 20 and Turner running the baseline to get it in finally to Griffin who pitches it right back to Turner and Turner now feels the pressure and the uh, ball just to the right of us Amanda good catch as it uh, is knocked away by Manhattan but the pressure as you say uh, uh, Chris uh, getting to St. Peter's at times well they get the ball in the hands of Taylor who's not used to bringing the ball up he gets near midcourt the double team can come at you Taylor a bit unsure Peacocks get it back but certainly Manhattan liking the way the pressure is starting to affect St. Peter's and there we see a double team and that's the end result sometimes that you, you get a foul but still the Jaspers playing at this pace and the Peacocks need to continue to be strong with the basketball Ito exposed it and again he's not used to playing against a double team about 40 feet from the basket Crawford and Polycap providing the double team Polycap his second personal foul uh, he'll come out momentarily you would think here with 440 to play Griffin with the pull up three ball no and he was moving to his left and had to kind of point that to his right and had a defender right on him Waterman for the pull up from three back iron no long rebound Gonzalez manages to grab it Waterman looks to poke it away and now St. Peter's with a five on four break and Echionia straight away three so Strozala takes the three misses goes for the steal Peacocks five on four and Echionia his second three ball 23-21 well, the, uh, the crowd here at Yonatelli Center getting their money's worth today. Pauly Cap fouled on the jump hook by Idowu. Idowu came a little bit under Pauly Cap. Got him with the body. Coach Dunn will go to his bench. The freshman uh, Edube, Edube from Manhattan, 6'7". Puerto Rico native. Uh, would imagine he's coming in for Pauly Cap. Uh, he was at the table, Paul DeCap at the line, where he's got two freebies, makes the first. And uh, Ebube will wait. However, uh, Capuano will come in for Turner. And uh, Cameron Jones, Devante Turner, back in for St. Peter's. 4.04 to play, first half. This is to tie it up. And Paul DeCap does so. Now the substitution. Jaspers, after the made free throw, can set up in the press. And they do Polycap uh, with the four points all for the free throw line. Devontae Turner rapidly between his legs. Now is doubled after he picked up the dribble, and it's a tie-up. It'll uh, go back to St. Peter's and, and Steve Massiello applauding the effort well, by Manhattan. That's what the run and jump does. Turner, we talked about it, easier said than done. We're not out there against that double team, but you have to keep your dribble. Crawford waiting with his size at midcourt. You give up your dribble, and then you're in a real tough spot. You have to have someone come out and help you. You don't have the passing angle. Caught Crawford so long to throw it ahead in the middle of the floor, so a teammate has to come back behind the ball by the time he does that. Ten-second call comes into play, so... Great job by the Jaspers. Peacock ball handlers need to keep the dribble. Well, two of the top defending teams in the MAC historically got a low-scoring game here in the first half. It's St. Peter's 23, Manhattan 23. Officials timeout with 3:56 to play. You're listening to St. Peter's University basketball on uh, YouTube.com and the Peacocks Network.com. Glenn Crooks, Chris Radicke for the Anatoly Center in Jersey City. Now we have 11 lead changes and six ties. So uh, that's an abundance of uh, back and forth here in the first half, Chris. And the Peacocks now up to nine turnovers. Manhattan has done a good job in the recent going of getting shots, handling the basketball. Eight points for the Jaspers off those 
nine turnovers by the Peacock. Short baseline jumper, Gonzalez put too much on it. And then uh, Njai, he, uh, he saw his reaction. He was fouled on the putback attempt, and he, he's just upset with himself that he didn't put it home. Well, I, I think he wanted the N1, and uh, he didn't get it. They say the foul was on the floor. So it's a one and one for Njai. All right. As uh, Manhattan goes over the limit, and Njai rattles it home. Mamadou uh, now two of three from the line. He's uh, just a 53% shooter from the stripe. Foul line two hour left, and he makes both. And St. Peter's has the two-point advantage with 3.45 to go in the half. Holding up his left hand with a signal for this uh, half-court set. It was Nehemiah Mack. Here's Strzala. And his looping pass into the lane was picked off by Anetchionia. Crawford wasn't even looking. Another turnover for the Jaspers. That one a bit unforced. Here's Gonzalez between the circles. Finds a seam with a pass to Enjai. Out to Anetchionia. His looping three is short, but he gets his own rebound. Saves it on the baseline. Gonzalez with the pump fake. Here's the dribble drive. Right-handed shot is good, but the basket will be waved off on an offensive foul. Waterman stepped in to take the charge. That's the danger of floating when you shoot. You put it in the ref's hands. If Gonzalez goes straight up, takes that shot, no chance of the official calling a charge. So the second foul on Gonzalez, he'll stay in the game. His second personal foul, 16 foul, so uh, both teams in the bonus. Here's Capuano. Straight away, Waterman with a pump fake. That allows him to drive, put it in, and that one will be erased from the score sheet, that bucket, uh, because that's a charge on Waterman. And uh, who did... Who drew the charge, Chris? Well, I think it was Griffin, but his shoulders were turned, wasn't square to Waterman. That's one that could go either way. Fortunately for St. Peter's, they get the call. 25-23, Peacocks still with the advantage. Waterman, though, because he's been successful from three, uh, that set him up for the uh, pump fake and the drive-in. He's still... Uh, beefing a bit at the other end where he and Samuel Adowu are uh, standing alone. But there's a case where the mid-range game comes into play, like on the previous possession for St. Peter's, Waterman can go straight up with that pull-up instead, trying to get all the way to the basket, gets caught for the charge. Cameron Jones across court to Gonzalez. Griffin will shoot a three. That was contested by Crawford, got a hand in his face, and that one went off the front of the rim and the backboard, and... Manhattan with the uh, uncontested rebound. Here's Capuano along the right sideline. He picks up the dribble. Griffin, though, giving him space. Waterman, head of the circle, now to Mack. 12 seconds to shoot Manhattan. 2.15 on the game clock. Waterman had a notion. He'll drive the lane again. Right elbow, now kicks out right corner. Capuano short. His follow is good along the right baseline. And here's the pressure. Manhattan, as St. Peter's... Got the ball in quickly. Gonzalez successfully goes cross court with a bounce to Jones and St. Peter's. It took them 10 seconds to get it into the Manhattan end, and now they'll set. A minute 45 to play. We're all tied at 25. Gonzalez holds the ball, left wing, drives towards the foul line out to Anetchionia. Left edge of the lane, and he threw a little bit of an elbow to uh, Nehemiah Mack and uh, is going to get called for the offensive foul. That isn't really Etchenonia's game. Driving to the basket, had to put it on the floor, leaned in, offensive foul, was looking to kick it out to the corner. 139 to play, and Manhattan looking to uh, take the lead once again, which would be our 12th lead change. The second half, Mack using the off arm to ward off Gonzalez. Now a pass underneath to Waterman, and he was caught under there, and. Uh, Ends up turning the ball over. Gonzalez working against Mack near the midcourt circle in that Peacock logo. Now Adou has a low pump fake. Banks it home. Samuel Adou now with eight. Approaching one minute left in the first half. St. Peter's back on top. Our 13th lead change. 
Long three, Mack. It's good. Nobody guarded Mack. There was some space off the screen. One dribble. Was able to easily step into that three. 33% from three-point range for the season. Seven of 21 entering today's action. The Jaspers, 28. St. Peter's, 27. A duel. Do, nice kick out to Gonzalez. And he pulls up for the short one off the glass. No. And Do, great position. Misses the follow. And he goes up again. It's off the back iron, but he's fouled. Idowu wants that one back, but a great job on the miss, keeping the ball up high, going right back up with it. Two offensive rebounds. Idowu fails to put it back, but he's got five rebounds to go along with his team high eight points. So uh, good recovery from uh, the Ryder match, or game rather, uh, for Idowu. I still would have liked to have seen him when he caught it initially in the post to go up strong with it. He just scored from the left block. That time he looked for the kick out, but the Peacocks need some paint points from Idowu. He has to be a little more selfish there, go aggressively to the basket. Well, it's his first time to the free throw line, and uh, excellent shooter uh, from the stripe. 85% uh, coming in, and he makes both. And what do you have? Another lead change, 29-28. Shot clock off. Manhattan will hold for the last shot if they can. 22 seconds on the game clock. They trail by one. It's Turner glancing to his left, looking at Steve Masiello, his coach. He's standing right in the center circle on the Peacock side of the floor. Now sets up with an acceleration move. Whips a pass left corner for Mack. He'll uh, launch a three. No, the follow. In and out. And rebound chased down by uh, St. Peter's as uh, Crawford unable to convert and uh, Manhattan will jog back into the locker room down by one. A lot of contact underneath. Coach Dunn speaking with Jeff Anderson pointing down to the other end of the floor. I think he's concerned a bit with how many charges Manhattan has been able to take and you know from coach's perspective of course you think they're getting the benefit of the whistle so we'll see how that plays out in the second half mentioned earlier very difficult game to officiate a lot of contact both teams defensive mind you have guys sliding in to attempt charges the help defense is there so it's been a good one a very physical game so far but both teams shooting the ball well st peter's 46 percent manhattan 39 percent for the game below their average of 46 for the season but they're really shooting the ball well from three-point range 55 percent six of 11 the peacocks four of nine 44 percent the peacocks five of six from the line jasper four of four and when you really think about it the three-point shot both teams shooting well it's because the teams are so aggressive defensively when you drive the basketball you're gonna have open shooters on the perimeter when you're taking those tough twos in the paint that's where the shooting percentage is gonna go down Great stuff, Chris, and uh, that leaves us at 29-28 here at intermission with uh, Xavier Turner leading Manhattan with seven points, and Samuel Odoo leads all scores uh, for the Peacocks. He has ten points. We'll step away here at the halftime interval, where again, once the score is uh, St. Peter's 29 and Manhattan 28 on YouTube.com and the Peacocks Network.com.
And we're back in Jersey City on Italy Center. Glenn Crooks, Chris Radicke, a couple of minutes before the start of the second half where uh, St. Peter's leads Manhattan 29 to 28. The Peacocks led by Samuel Idoz, 10 points and five rebounds while Xavier Turner got off to a hot start then uh, cooled off a bit but uh, he's still on top of the scoring ledger for the Jaspers. Seven points plus three assists. So, Chris, anything on the stat sheet that jumps out at you here? Well, the 11 turnovers for St. Peter's. The Peacocks average 12 and a half per ball game. When they've been able to get the ball over the midcourt line, St. Peter's has done well. 10 of 22 from the field, 4 of 9 from three-point range. So that means the Peacocks 6 of 13 shooting two-point attempts. So St. Peter's needs to do a better job of handling the basketball. Edoa, when he's caught the ball in the post, has done some good work. Peacocks made an adjustment in the latter part of the half against that run and jump near midcourt. It was Cameron Jones who came back. You have to get behind the basketball so you can reverse it. But by that time, you know, time is ticking. The guy on the weak side of the floor has to speed the ball up the floor or pass it ahead. That's what Manhattan wants you to do. If you dribble up too fast, most guys' the tendency is the guy's on you, riding your shoulder, your eyes are going to go to the floor. Then that's when they come at you with a double team. So that's why it's such an effective defense. The Manhattan defense much better than a year ago when they struggled. Not as easy to get the ball to the middle of the floor, and they have the players to trap in the run and jump. So the Peacocks knew they were going to get pressure all day long. We'll see how they react to it here in the second half because the point of that pressure again it's not just the first half it's the idea of wearing you down and we'll see how the Peacocks can handle it talked about it earlier Gonzalez and Turner excuse me yeah Gonzalez and Turner obviously for St. Peter's two Turners out on the floor uh, first time playing them Manhattan defense so we'll see if they improve here in the second half Peacocks definitely have to get Devontae Turner involved, has not attempted a shot. Three turnovers and a steal in eight minutes. Turner scoreless. Devontae Turner coming off a career high 34 point effort in a loss to Ryder. That game finished up 88 84 in favor of the Bronx. This one, it's a, a bit lower scoring with two of the better defending teams in the league. And we are underway. Second half, Manhattan in their. Kelly Green with white trim, and this is Waterman working his way under the basket, and he misses under the pressure of Idowu, and the rebound skips right into the hands of an Echionia to Gonzalez to Griffin, and Idowu slips and travels as he catches the ball in the uh, low post right side. 11 turnovers in the first half, 25 seconds in, another turnover for the Peacocks. Well, you mentioned Manhattan's struggles a year ago, just five wins in the league. After the previous three seasons, two of them, MAC championships. Here's a Turner with the uh, running right hander. Missed it. Waterman under very deep. His follow is no good, uh, but he is fouled. And Waterman has struggled with the uh, short range shots, Chris. He's uh, hit a couple from deep. Well, there was a lot of contact here. And Waterman rightfully frustrated on the first possession of the half. He pushed off a bit, but looked like there could have been some contact when he put the shot up. There, the whistle came very late. And that Chionia, his second personal, Waterman. He uh, uses the rim of the backboard to make the first. 63% from the line. Averages 10 per game for Manhattan and makes the second. And uh, yet another lead change. That's number 14 on the afternoon. Just underway, second half. Less than a minute gone by. Glenn Crooks, Chris Radicke, Gonzalez manages to jump pass over a double team to uh, to Taylor. Now a deep right corner jumper, no. And the weak side rebound to Rich Williams, who uh, sat a good portion of the first half with a couple of fouls. Here's the drive, right el elbow back to Turner. Now to uh, Capuano. Turner accelerates, beats Idowu on the help. And now a three ball for the right side, rimmed it. Waterman, offensive rebound. That was Crawford who missed, but Waterman working hard underneath the boards. And now the rebound off the uh, Waterman miss, tapped high into the air, taken by Inecchionia. Gonzalez 
Kind of a wild spin and move to get it out to Adowu. And his three ball looked like it went about halfway down and then popped out. St. Peter's uh, scoreless still in the uh, second half. Minute 35 gone by. Turner walks with the basketball. And that's the Turner on the Manhattan side, Xavier. Manhattan getting a couple of offensive rebounds to start the half. Had just three in the first half. So the Peacocks have to make sure they're boxing out, create that wall underneath the basket like they did so often in the first half. Taylor and Gonzalez able to uh, solve the Manhattan press. But again, 10 seconds off the shot clock as they uh, worked it way uh, way up and now Ado the jump hook he uh, posted well on the left and that went off the back iron taken by Turner for Manhattan Rich Williams long pull up three no Idowu alone underneath takes the rebound Williams shot selection has been questionable throughout this ball game certainly not a good look there early in the clock when you pump fake and then have to reset you don't hit a very high percentage of those shots St. Peter's looking for their first points of the second half. Griffin bounces for Idowu. Baseline left. Waterman, does he draw the charge? Yes. Bit of a flop there, but Idowu did extend the arm, so we don't have the number in front of us, but it may be four or five charges that the Jaspers have drawn. Idowu's second personal. The Jaspers bring the ball up now slowly with uh, Xavier Turner, senior guard, Indianapolis, Indiana. Bounces for Crawford, who faces up an Echionia outside the three-point arc straight away. Crawford now goes left side for Turner. Here's Waterman. Spot up three. Got it. And that was a contested three. Ijo got out. Turner, the hard drive. Waterman pops beyond the arc and hits a big one. He's now three of four from three-point range. Team high, 11 points. Here's a long arcing three by Gonzalez. No, the tap missed by Adowu, but Adowu gets his own rebound. Gonzalez tries another three, this time straight away, and Manhattan has it with a four-point lead. That's like a bulge in this game. Here's Turner into the lane. Uh, right corner, Crawford loses the handle for a moment, then he's bumped by Griffin as he falls to the floor. And St. Peter's with their third team foul, three and a half minutes in, still looking for their first point. Elijah Gonzalez struggling, two of eight from the field, 0 of three from three point range. The first three was, as you mentioned, a deep, deep one. The second one you don't mind off the offensive rebound, the defense is scrambling. It was a pretty good look, but after he missed that second one, Coach Dunn turned to the bench for Devontae Turner. Turner guarding Turner. It's Xavier Turner. He finds Waterman with Griffin there. And Samuel Idowu worked his way down the lane. A big rejection for the uh, leading shot blocker for St. Peter's. Four minutes gone by. Let's see if Idowu can get the first points. It'll have to be from the foul line. And you can see the frustration on the face of Waterman. Felt like he was fouled again. That time when Idowu got that post position, he just chopped him across the arm. So uh, a well-earned second personal foul for Zane Waterman, senior from North Carolina. Put Samuel Idowu, a junior from Brooklyn, New York. And uh, a rare miss from the free throw line this season for Idowu. Samuel comes into the contest 35 of 41 from the line. He's now 2 of 3 on the night. Keep saying night, it's the afternoon. Big day for NFL fans. Who do you have in the games today? Well, I mean, it would be interesting to see if Jacksonville could pull it off. Some of their strengths match up with weaknesses of New England. I think in the second game, it's really a toss up. Yeah, two good games ahead of us and another foul by St. Peter's as Turner is uh, nudged and it's a blocking foul that'll go uh, well it'll, we'll await the call it's against St. Peter's it'll be their fourth team foul and uh, we've reached uh, our initial officials time out of the second half and uh, St. Peter's has scored but one point after the halftime interval they trail Manhattan 33 to 30 15 52 left to play on youtube.com
Well, the two teams tied for the top spot in the MAC through seven games. Canisius and Iona, both six and one, and uh, uh, both uh, playing each other today. And that's up in the New Rochelle. And uh, early on, just 16-12 uh, left in the first half. Canisius with the one-point lead. Peacocks took nine threes in the entire first half. They've taken four already. St. Peter's starting off the second half 0 of 5 from the field. Jasper's 1 of 7, but they did hit a free, and they did hit two free throws. Peacocks 1 of 2 from the line in the second half. Manhattan trying to build on a three-point lead. Turner, right elbow, kicks for Crawford. Corner three is good! Wide open look for Crawford. Manhattan now 8 of 15 from three-point range for the season. They shoot at 39%. Well, at 38%, Crawford, and he nailed that one. And it's Xavier Turner with the uh, dribble drive and drawing defenders. Here's an Echionia, two pump fakes. Now it's Turner in, double team, finds Griffin on the weak side. Can he answer? No. Tried a three, and it was Crawford ripping it down for Manhattan. And here's a looping alley-oop as Polycap. And let's see uh, a Coach, foul. Coach Dunn calls a timeout. And now the officials will go over. They counted the hoop for sure. I saw that indication, but something else occurred. 23 with a, a foul up on the board. Not sure which team that is. Well, well I guess it's a Manhattan because that's it's on the first team foul. Poor transition defense by the Peacocks. No one saw Polycap streaking to the basket. Yeah, Manhattan, uh, a lot of sarcastic roars and clapping as uh, Nick Griffin hits a free throw at the other end. Apparently a technical foul. No, what's? Why is he getting an uncontested you know, I free guess throw? Why he, he was? Maybe you know uh, why? it's hard to hear the PA what, yeah. what the call was on the far side of the floor. Well, Steve Massiello did leave the uh, coaching area. I'm not sure if that was it. Well, he's that's that could be the case. He was out of the box several times in the first half. Here's the drive by Inetchionia, or rather Enjai, to Turner, to Inetchionia. Baseline drive, Turner. And another traveling violation. Coach Don definitely signaled for the timeout. So with that break, so to speak, when they talked it over, he decided to Save not it. call the timeout, yeah. and then the Peacocks go ahead and turn it over. Well, Manhattan with their uh, biggest lead. It's 38-31, and Crawford feeling it, and that one went left of the rim and uh, bounced once before. Quinn Taylor picked it up for St. Peter's, and... St. Peter's now will uh, try to answer this Manhattan run. The Peacocks have scored two points in just about six minutes of the second half, and there's a steal. Poor pass by Inetchionia, a gift to Xavier Turner. St. Peter's uh, retreats defensively effectively, so now Turner will back up on the dribble and set up at the half court. Turner, he uh, circles to his left and now bounces left for Mack. Crawford head of the circle to Turner. Turner... Looks to uh, want to drive around a screen. He'll pull up and nails a three-pointer straight away. And you can't give Turner that much space. You have to have the hand up and contest. Manhattan just sees and control this ball game here early in the second half. And similar to Thursday night when Jordan Allen took over for Ryder to start the second half. Peacock's in a big hole, especially in a game like this where the points have been so hard to come by. Well, Xavier Turner now with 10. He's two for two from behind the arc, which puts him at 12 for 21 in MAC play, where he's shooting over 53% from a three point range. 13 41 left to play, and indeed, John Dunn has called a timeout, so we'll step away with Manhattan ahead of St. Peter's. 41 31 on YouTube.com.
Well, that's the first time between timeouts. We haven't had a lead change, I don't believe. And uh, Manhattan pulling away a bit. Their biggest lead of 10 points now, and the pressure's going to be on. Peacox with four second-half turnovers. 0 of 6 from the field in the second half for the game. St. Peter's 15 giveaways. Manhattan with 16 points off those 15 turnovers, and there's another one. A little scoop pass by Turner deflected away, and gaining control, Manhattan. Richie Williams will... Uh, Pick up the dribble and go to Turner. Turner now works his way between the circles. Manhattan 41, St. Peter's 31. And there's a shot by Polycap that he misses the follow. No, he'll be at the line. A really great entrance on the lob from Williams on the baseline to Polycap. Probably should have made the initial shot, but the only uh, negative here for Manhattan is the clock stops. Manhattan with three offensive rebounds in the entire first half. Three offensive boards to start the second half, and we haven't played seven minutes. Paul DeCap uh, makes the first, so he now has seven. Manhattan led by uh, Waterman with 11. Turner has 10. That's Xavier Turner. Pauly, Pauly Cap uh, now with uh, the seven. St. Peter's led by Samuel Idowu, who has been shut out in the second half. Tough to score when you're not in the game. He's at the sideline. He's standing up in the bench area. Pretty anxious to get back into this. And uh, Pauly Cap makes another 12-point Manhattan lead. And I don't want to uh, continue to repeat myself, but just two points here in the second half for St. Peter's. Now seven minutes in. Gonzalez and uh, Jones break the pressure. Gonzalez now on the dribble. He looks over to John Dunn for uh, an answer to how St. Peter's might be able to penetrate this uh, very effective Manhattan defense. And a baseline move and shot by Powell misses. He uh, was in good position. Just rolled out. That's the way things have been going for St. Peter's here in the second half. Turner now will slow it down again. Working uh, uh, against Gonzalez and blew past Elijah Gonzalez and then Draws another foul as he penetrated the lane and two free uh, throws coming up for Xavier Turner. And there's a case where you just want to maintain your position, make Turner finish with a tough two. You bring down the arms, you pick up the foul, Manhattan at the line. Well, breaking down the first defender, Gonzalez, who only has one personal foul, but once he zip past Gonzalez, Things worked out well for Turner. Makes the first. Xavier Turner, 79% uh, from the line. He averages a little under nine per game as he converts the second biggest lead. 14 points for Manhattan. And uh, Xavier Turner with 12 points to take over the uh, team lead uh, for Manhattan. So uh, the senior guard really... Uh, Stepping up here this afternoon in Jersey City. And the cross court from Cameron Jones. And how about the pressure? And you can see Capoyuano and Nehemiah Mack just did a little bit of a chest bump because their pressure caused that turnover. Gonzalez still needs to stay behind the ball for that release. When it comes over the timeline, went a bit too forward. Jones was expecting him to be back. Another Peacock turnover. A nightmare second half for St. Peter's. They had the one-point lead at intermission. They trail by 14 with 12-10 left second half. Mack around a screen from uh, Waterman. Gets it back. Waterman now looking to drive on the smaller Gonzalez and has it stripped away by Elijah. Trying to lead the break. Finds Jones to Gonzalez. Manhattan back quickly, so St. Peter's unable to go directly to the basket. And Echionia to Gonzalez, fakes the pass, now goes cross-court to Griffin. And Gonzalez was fouled as he looked to put that uh, pass over the top of the Manhattan defense. And uh, it's only the first team foul on Manhattan. It, it'll go against a Bube, a Bube. And we've got an official's timeout, 11.49 to play. Manhattan 45, St. Peter's 31 on the Peacocks Network.com.
the points off turnovers, that little category is working in the favor of Manhattan. They have nine, uh, 18 points now off of the, uh, the 17 St. Peter's turnovers. So six second half turnovers for the Peacocks and we play just over eight minutes. Still a lot of time to go, but the Peacocks have to get going on the offensive end. Well, they haven't been able to figure out how to score the basketball second half, just two points. Down by 14. St. Peter's has the ball, looking to score to the basket on our right here for the press table. Jones and Echionia straight away. Now looks to drive, right elbow. One second to shoot and count the three. Or don't count the three. This one uh, may go to video. We'll see if Peacocks are able to beat the clock. They'll take a look. And the way things are going. That was tight. What's your per I don't think he beat it. And uh, It has to be released, correct? Yep. And St. Peter's, if you look at these numbers, and they wave it off. So still... They haven't made a field goal here in the second half, and now they've turned it over for the 18th time. So he played eight and a half minutes. St. Peter's hasn't made a field goal, and they've turned it over eight times. 0 for 12 from the floor. Five of those shots from beyond the arc. Well, here comes Manhattan, and Devante Turner uh, is a... Uh, Way to get the scorer's table. He'll come back in momentarily for St. Peter's to see if he can provide the spark that he has in the last two games with back-to-back uh, -back career highs. All right, Manhattan with uh, Xavier Turner, who's uh, really been explosive here in the second half in particular. And Williams with a beautiful release from three-point land. And, wow, 17-point lead. Jones was right there, but Williams with his size was able to shoot over the top of him. Idowu. Holds the ball high over his head before getting it to an Echionia. Left sideline. Left baseline. It's a Dohu. Reverse as he goes uh, across court and a nice lay in by Jones. Well done by St. Peter's. And finally, their first field goal with 10 40 left. All right. Turner will slow it up. Manhattan right to left, second half. Cross court. Xavier Turner. And uh, Gonzalez, moving his feet well, draws the charge. Turner extended the left arm. was actually putting it on the back of Gonzalez. And that free throw before was for Polycott hanging on the rim after the dunk. All right. St. Peter's gets it back. 48-33, trailing by 15. Turner and Gonzalez. They've uh, had a lot of pressure on them tonight. The uh, the guard work for St. Peter's. 17 turnovers. Turner for three. Rimmed it. And Idowu trying to uh, battle along with Polycap. Ball loose on the floor, and Echionia picks it up. Pump fake. He's at the right elbow. Uh, elects to uh, not take the shot and gives it up to Gonzalez. Down by 15, St. Peter's and another turnover, and that's been the story really over the last, well, it was rebounding against Ryder. Tonight it's turnovers. Gonzalez, no angle for that entry pass, forced it. Peacocks give it away again. 9.30 to play. Mack now, along with Turner. Running things for Manhattan. Here's turnover. Crossover, buzzes past the Echionia. The kick out to Williams. And uh, you give a lot of credit to Xavier Turner for that three-point field goal by Williams. Back-to-back -back for him. 18-point Manhattan lead. And we don't have the benefit of a replay, but I wonder if he was really trying to throw that ball to the corner. Looked like maybe he was deflected out to Williams, and that's the way things have been going for the Jaspers in the second half. But you have to give him credit. They've created these opportunities with the relentless defense. They've denied the Peacocks. They've forced turnovers. They've gotten the offense going. Massiello, a master motivator like his mentor, Rick Patino. I'm sure he used this early start to his team's benefit. Home team picks what time the game starts. Peacocks went for the 
noontime start, knowing that Manhattan was playing on Friday night. And Massiello, I'm sure, turned it into a positive because from the very beginning, the pregame, you could see that the Manhattan players were energized. Are you allowed to have a tip off at 10 a.m.? Is there a rule uh, as to when you I'm can sure uh, throw it up? I'm sure there's a rule against that. You don't <laughs> see too many of those unless, you know, every once in a while I see a couple of 11.30 games out there. I think there were a couple yesterday, but I'm sure that's for TV. But you remarked earlier in the week about the unusual start time today. Well, most of these games here at the Anatelli Center are at 2 o'clock over the years, and uh, we had a noon start on New Year's Eve. You can see why. Yeah. But today, a bit unusual. The women played at 1 o'clock yesterday. So That New Year's Eve was a victory over Monmouth, uh, followed by a close loss to Iona on the road, and then a home victory against Quinnipiac, a dominating game for the Peacocks. But they've lost three straight since, and... Uh, their position right now, uh, unless there's a, a remarkable comeback to uh, drop their fourth in a row. Here's Turner with a jump stop and the shot, it's good. And there you can see the athletic ability of Turner bouncing into the lane. Peacocks are going to need more of that. That basket allows St. Peter to set up in the press. Manhattan throws it away. First field goal for Turner coming off of 34 and 22 point performances. In his last two games for St. Peter's, he's led the Peacocks in scoring the last three. The Peacocks have won four straight against Manhattan, and now Adobe banks it in. Williams let him go. Remember, Williams had two fouls in the first half. That limited his effectiveness. Now, Manhattan, they haven't felt the pressure very often here this afternoon. And Richie Williams called for his third personal. The off-arm, I guess, came into play. Extended the arm, Williams not buying it from the St. Peter's and the momentum stopped. Massiello calls a 30 second timeout. The old adage is teams that press don't like to be pressed. And the Peacocks have turned the Jaspers over a couple of times here. So still time left, 8.43 to go. Peacocks down by 14. Well, you mentioned Massiello earlier. He's in his seventh year here with Manhattan. He was a captain his senior year with Kentucky. Played in three Final Fours and won two national championships with the Wildcats. Played under Rick Pitino and Tubby Smith. And uh, so that sort of experience and the way Pitino likes to uh, organize a game, you can see the similarities with the pressure that Manhattan provides from start to finish. All right, here's Turner. Now St. Peter's looking to get back into this game. They have scored their last two times down the floor. They get it after the uh, Masiello timeout with Gonzalez. Turner, a long straightaway three, and he motors his way to the basket to try to tap it up and keep it alive. It, it's uh, taken away by Manhattan and Xavier Turner. Williams comes to his stop in between the circles off the feed from Turner, and Xavier Turner working against Devante Turner right at the edge of the uh, center circle. Now it's Waterman, picks up the dribble in his cross court. Well, Nehemiah Mack is six foot one. He needed to be about six two in order to gather that one in. So the Peacocks more. <laughs> giving the Jaspers some of their own medicine here, but if you're St. Peter's, you still have to score the basketball. Uh, last time down the floor, Devontae Turner, the deep three. He knew it was off when he let it go, but he can make that shot. He has such lift on his three. Turner has it again, Devante, left sideline, Turner. Here's Griffin for three, swish, and St. Peter's down by 11. Moments ago, it was an 18-point deficit. All right, they can put the pressure on again. The shot clock has not started, so I would imagine something will happen shortly. Uh, Waterman holds the ball high over his head. It started very late. Now it's at 23 seconds, which is probably about Seven or eight seconds off the mark. Polycap, well, St. Peter's benefits nonetheless as Polycap drops that pass in the lane and it's picked up by Turner. Along with Gonzalez, here's Gonzalez. Drives into the lane, he was bumped on his way. And uh, it's gonna be a foul against Xavier Turner. And it'll be the fifth team foul on Manhattan. And uh, <laughs> an unusual <laughs> sequence. As the shot clock wasn't moving, the well, St. Peter's bench was screaming, and uh, they get the basketball anyway. I got 
caught watching Coach Dunn and Coach Henry just pleading for that reset. Manhattan had a chance for like a 37-second possession, but then Jasper's turn it over, and I guess you say, you know what, we're going to let it go there. So 7.23 to go. Peacock's trying to make a comeback here, down by 11 points, and they're talking it over on the far side of the floor. So when we come back, it'll be St. Peter's ball. They've cranked it up on the defensive end. They've gotten some pressure. They've gotten some good looks. Certainly, Devontae Turner's energy has helped create some of that. Even his threat from three-point range, they were able to reverse the ball and get Griffin an open three. So it's got to be Turner and Griffin for St. Peter's from the perimeter, and they still have to pound the ball into Idowo when they have a chance. All right, it's an official's timeout, 7.23 to play in the game. Uh, it's Manhattan 51, St. Peter's 40 on YouTube.com. Our next broadcast on YouTube and the PeacocksNetwork.com. Uh, it's a makeup game, not originally on the schedule, to be Tuesday, January 23rd against Marist. Chris Radicke will be with you for that one. But here, uh, St. Peter's missed the first 12 shots of the second half. They've now put in five of their last nine to get back into the game, down by 11, Chris. So the Peacocks are going to have to continue with his defensive effort during the timeout the officials were checking the video looks like to make sure the game clock is correct anytime you see the stopwatch out over there you're just hoping it's not a long delay St. Peter's left of their own basket with Taylor looking looking and uh, lobs a pass out front to uh, Gonzalez, who was hounded by Capuano, who got the bump in on Gonzalez. That acceleration move draws another foul. And uh, both teams now poised in the bonus, each with 16 fouls. There's Devontae Turner, who's uh, generated some life into this St. Peter's offense. Griffin cross court back to Turner, splits the defense, puts up a wild shot, and. That one's going to go uh, Manhattan's way. Turnover off the charge by Turner. So Manhattan defensively helping out once again. Big call against St. Peter's when you're coming back. But we saw Devontae Turner taking those long strides. If you control your body just a bit more, you don't put it in the official's hands. Well, here's St. Peter's once again with pressure. And again, it takes time off the shot clock. And Devontae Turner... Starting up on uh, Xavier Turner. Now it's Williams. Gets it down low to Polycap. And the baby hook. Well, not much baby to that hook. It clanked off the backboard. And uh, he missed it badly. But the ball will stay with Manhattan. And when you're down by 11, you can't have those type of mistakes. You have to grab the rebound there. You give Manhattan 11 on the shot clock. And a chance at another possession. And it's going to be Waterman. Waterman was trying to get position under the basket off a screen near the foul line, and along the way, he extended his arm, and that, that has been one call that's been consistent, I think, Chris, where arm extended foul call. So the Peacocks get it back off the Jasper turnover. The pressure continues. Here's the drive by Turner. It's blocked by Polycap, but uh, you heard the whistle before the shot, and... Uh, 
It'll be uh, bonus time, and Devontae Turner now with a couple of big free, or at least uh, he hopes a couple of big free throws. Devontae was able to get the defender's shoulders turned, a hard speed dribble. He has that type of burst, that type of athleticism. A couple of big free throws here if he can make both. Got to uh, hit the front end first to oh. make it a single-digit lead for Manhattan. He is the best free throw shooter statistically for St. Peter's. 24 of 26. Big one here with 6.32 to play. And he'll get the bonus. And it's still double digits, but down to 10. Uh, Peacocks, it looked uh, it looked rather uh, sorrowful for them. Down by 18, Manhattan putting the pressure on, causing turnovers. And St. Peter's down by 9. Plenty of time left for the Peacocks who are trying to break a three-game Mac losing streak. Williams along the left sideline finally gets into the St. Peter's end. Turner now backs up on the dribble. Xavier Turner. This time it's Nick Griffin guarding him as Devontae Turner switches and uh, will be on uh, Nehemiah Mack in this half court. Four seconds to shoot. Turner around the screen. Turner driving into the lane. And he puts up the uh, teardrop. And a gift foul as uh, the shot clock, uh, you heard the buzzer, is winding down, and that was a tough shot by Turner. There's a case where you want to see if you can make that tough two. Turner obviously can do that, but still, worst case scenario for the Peacocks really there. They run the shot clock down, now they get two free throws. Turner is 79% uh, for the line, but he misses the first. The senior guard making his 12th start of the year. And this is the 20th game of the season for Manhattan. Makes the second. Back to a 10-point lead for the Jaspers. Exactly six minutes to play in Jersey City. Glenn Crooks, Chris Radicke on the YouTube broadcast. Manhattan 4-3 and three in the league as Turner throws one up from uh, three-point land and uh, that was off uh, the mark and the rebound taken by Polycap who uh, may have been uh, poked in the eye a little bit. Williams for three back at the other end and Turner misses. Williams makes and here we go again. Defensive breakdown by the Peacocks. No one got out over the screen. Williams wide open. He's going to knock down that shot all day long. 55-52, Williams 12 points now, uh, all from three-point range. Turner on the drive, and a good body control by Polycap to uh, get the initial block, but then on the follow, he commits the foul. Polycap had six blocks on Friday night against Canisius, really getting experience with every game, started playing basketball late. An athletic player, a good find for Coach Massiello. Well, he's been credited with two blocks. I swear there were more in the first half. Taylor uh, makes the first. Quinn Taylor at the line again. Both the teams in the bonus. Nine team fouls so, uh, on uh, 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 Manhattan, so the double bonus coming up there. Quinn Taylor. Sophomore from Texas, misses the second, but the long rebound taken by Taylor. Griffin for three. No. And as uh, Anechionia tries to get position for the rebound, he grabbed it, but he also committed the foul. That would have been a huge three for Griffin. It was open, able to step into it. And one thing you notice when he shoots, really releases it with, almost with an open hand. Doesn't get the fingers down. Certainly, Nick, an excellent shooter, but sometimes it just looks like it's coming out of his hand a bit off. That time a wide open look off uh, to the right. Seven field goal attempts for him all. The check that eight all from behind the arc. And he's two of eight with a free throw seven points for Nick Griffin. Meanwhile, back at the other end, Waterman. Foul line left makes both after the Inecionia foul. Double bonus for both sides the rest of the way. Five minutes left. St. Peter's down by 14. They had cut the deficit to nine. Griffin, baseline drive, out to Gonzalez. Three on the way, and the freshman makes it. Good dribble drive by Nick Griffin, collapsing the defense. 
Gonzalez is able to set his feet. Now we have a turnover by the Jaspers. Well, St. Peter's, they have certainly increased the pressure out of necessity off the makes, and they uh, create another turnover on Manhattan. Griffin has it along the right sideline, flips a pass to Gonzalez. He drives left edge, puts it up. No! But the foul is called. Uh, in the act or not, won't really matter. He'll get two shots. Good aggressive drive by Gonzalez, the freshman from Oregon, creating some body contact. The clock stops. You can cut into that deficit at the line. Now, from the line, he's really struggled. Hasn't been there very frequently. Four of nine on the year. Puts it up, and no. So, as I always like to do with Chris at this moment, Let's talk technique. Well, but I think you can't talk really much about that because if you look coming into today's action, he was 46% from three-point range, 13 of 28. So it's more a case of something mental, you would think. Misses both. Rebound batted around. Taken by Griffin. Oh, Nacionia. He wanted to put up that three, but it was a pretty deep. Now in low to Idowu, who uh, he has struggled a bit inside. Misses that one with the left hand. There was pressure, but... Uh, Samuel Adowu unable to connect. You talk about that pressure. A couple times today, Adowu went up and his eyes weren't on the target. And that often happens when the defense is good. You don't see what you're shooting at until you're up in the air and in your motion. And back of the other end against Adowu, Pauly Cap spins along the baseline, got good position deep, and he puts it up and in. 60 to 46, Manhattan. With four minutes to play, Gonzalez dribbling between defenders, stuck in the paint, and there's Quinn Taylor with the pump fake, draws the foul underneath. He'll get two. Good cut by Taylor. Gonzalez picking it up at the foul line. was looking for somewhere to go with it. Peacocks will be at the line. Under four minutes to go, St. Peter's down by 14. Our uh, final officials timeout. Three minutes and 56 seconds remaining for Jersey City. It's Manhattan 60 and St. Peter's 46 on YouTube and the Peacocks Network.com. Our next broadcast, Tuesday, St. Peter's will take on Marist here in Jersey City. Uh, the battle for first place uh, in New Rochelle, New York this afternoon, uh, where Canisius on the road has the two-point edge as they approach the halftime interval. It's 44-42. Here, 59-46, uh, and uh, St. Peter's had cut it, Chris, to nine and had momentum. They increased the intensity on the defensive side, but uh, Manhattan did well to pull it back in again. Charge on Devontae Turner, certainly a big play in this game, and then leaving Rich Williams wide open for three. That certainly hurt, and that can demoralize the team. Use all this energy to come back, and the Peacocks haven't gotten as close as they did against Ryder on Thursday night, but a similar situation where the Peacocks get in a big hole and then try and fight back. Quinn Taylor at the line made the first and the second. He's got uh, three points all for the charity stripe to go along with seven rebounds. The leading rebounder for St. Peter's and the pressure again effective and a traveling violation on 
Thomas Capuano, who lost his balance, was on the floor and tried to keep the dribble alive. And I think the Peacock bench upset that the call came so late. They were the screaming, and then the official blew the whistle around two seconds later. So Nick Griffin pounds the ball right of the basket. Along the baseline, finds Devontae Turner. Here's Gonzalez pushing his way into the lane, spins a scoop pass to uh, Idowu, who couldn't handle it. Idowu's position for the lay-in. Williams crosses the timeline off the bounce from Xavier Turner. Turner gets it back from Williams. 3.30 to play. Manhattan with an 11-point lead, so they will take their time when possible. Eight seconds to shoot. Turner waiting for Polycap to uh, set the screen. Idowu switches with Griffin, bumps the uh, driving Turner, well, and uh, two free throws for uh, Xavier Turner. That's just the right way to play. Xavier Turner created that contact through the head back a little. There was some contact there. That's what hurts about being over the limit. Manhattan able to run some time. Now they get to the foul line. Uh, Dowu four fouls now. Normally would say he'll need to be careful. However, 3.20 left, his team down by a dozen, so he's uh, simply going to have to go for it. Turner makes a pair, 61-48. Gonzalez ahead to Turner. Turner between the circles, goes cross-court now... Uh, to Gonzalez, back to Turner, swinging it to Griffin. Here's Turner. He'll drive, stops, puts it up, and no, as a Waterman looked to get all ball from behind. Perhaps the foul was called by the uh, the man uh, defending behind. Absolutely. It's on Capuano. Good ball fake by Turner. Getting the defense in the air. Notice that time Manhattan really a token press, trying to get the Peacock to take some time off the shot clock and they set up in that 2-3 zone. Turner misses the first, so the Peacock's best free throw shooter in a, a, a very critical situation. Every uh, possession counts here, down by 13. Still 3.02 left, makes the second. With a three-point field goal, a 12-point deficit with three minutes to play is certainly uh, Something that could be erased quickly. Inside of three minutes now. Manhattan, you can see, taking their time on each possession. Turner against Gonzalez. Crossover, explodes. Goes left corner, Williams, and he misses the three. But it was a, a well-taken shot. Set up by the uh, Turner drive. Idowu comes to a jump stop. Drive by Turner. And the pull-up is good. Baseline left. 225, pressure St. Peter's, Waterman looking, and he finds Turner, who bangs into Gonzalez, John Dunn looking for the call, and now Devontae Turner holds Xavier Turner trying to get out of the backcourt, and this is the, the time where St. Peter's is just going to have to hope for some missed free throws along the way as well. Xavier Turner was much more of a focus on the offensive end last year for Manhattan. He took 174 free throws, made 154, shot at 89%, entering today's action 79%, 58 of 71. And a team leading 16 points after that first make. Now 6 of 7 on the day from the line. And misses the second. 11-point Manhattan lead, 2.15 to play. Gonzalez trying to push it for the Peacocks. Now it's Turner bouncing for Idowu, and he is uh, fouled by Polycap as he makes his way to the basket. So Idowu, a very good free throw shooter. Clock stops. And Polycap has fouled out for the third time this season, and that was a small bump along the baseline. So. He talked about it. Very difficult game to officiate. I'm sure neither coach real happy with the whistle. A lot of contact when these two teams play. And now it's just a small bump on the baseline. Manhattan poised to uh, move to a record of 5-3 and three in the league. For the Jaspers, uh, 
Their next game will be at Niagara, a midweek game in that region. That's a interesting scheduling. Idowu, foul line right for uh, St. Peter's, makes the first. Idowu uh, leads St. Peter's now with 14 points. He's 5 of 10 for the field, 4 of 5 from the line. Also has contributed 8 rebounds and 2 assists. Playing with four fouls, makes the second. Now Njai will come in to uh, defend while Idowu takes a seat with his four fouls. Full court pressure, St. Peter's. Taylor, Turner, and Turner reaches in and gets the basketball, but also got a piece of his namesake, Xavier Turner. Nearly a turnover for the Jaspers. They had nine turnovers in the first half, 20 as of now, so 11 giveaways, and a bunch of them came once St. Peter's started to come with pressure at about the nine-minute mark of the second half. Well, points off turnovers, 26 for Manhattan, 16 for St. Peter's. Two oh six to play. Big foul. Devontae Turner now out of the ball game for St. Peter's. You have to wonder where the points are going to come from. Xavier Turner, rim in the glass, helping it along. Turner continues to build on his uh, team high in the scoring department. Now with 18 after those two makes. 8 of 10 from the line, 4 of 6 for the field, and a perfect 2 of 2 from beyond the arc. Idowu takes the feed from Gonzalez, and he makes the basket. However, Gonzalez is uh, called for the offensive foul, another charge. Gonzalez passing on the move in a case like that. You slide by, you avoid the contact, create some space there. Would have been able to get it to Idowu at a wide open layup. And Echionia re-enters the game for uh, Cameron Jones and Mamadou Njai for Samuel Idowu. The long arms of Echionia trying to hassle Waterman. And that press is broken very well. Williams ahead of the field. And the slam dunk puts a signature perhaps end of this one. And Echionia, though, on the reverse is fouled. So clock stops again for the two shots from the free throw line. Peacocks got caught too up the, far up the floor on the pressure. Njai was beaten. Once you give a guy like Rich Williams some open space, you're not gonna catch up to him. The easy flush down the other end of Necionia with a chance for an N1. You know he'd like to have that one back. Just a little bit of body contact, missed the reverse layup. Well, 12 points, St. Peter's is down and Echionia gets one more. And it's good. Makes his first two free throws on the afternoon. Now has eight points. Pressure backward again, St. Peter's. And a violation. So uh, the ball turned over. That was a quick five-second call. <laughs> and uh, the other thing, Waterman finally started to run the baseline. Not sure he's why. He's trying to take the ball out underneath the basket. That's usually a no-no. You don't have an angle. If you have to throw it long, you can't do so. The backboard's in the way. Started to move, and that call came quickly. Taylor to Griffin. Griffin takes it out of the left corner on the dribble. Now the pump fake in the lane. Left-hander, no. And Waterman on the deck. Timeout called by Manhattan as he uh, was in a bit of a scrum situation, wondering what might happen next. So uh, takes the safe route. And Manhattan will talk it over, as well as uh, John Dunn and St. Peter's. Real tough shot for Griffin. Tried to create some contact. A left-handed floater off two feet from about five or six feet away. Need a lot of strength to get that one up and in. But the Peacocks are going to have to regroup after, say, 140 to go down by 11. Wouldn't call it a miracle, but certainly a lot of good things would have to happen here at the end of the game especially without Devontae Turner and his explosiveness. His fifth personal has uh, taken him to the sideline, Devontae Turner. 
who uh, finished with seven points, missed all three of his uh, three-point field goal attempts, two of six on the day, three of four for the line, uh, one rebound, one assist. So Turner, uh, who had been explosive in his last two starts, uh, limited here today by uh, what has been a very active Manhattan defense, and uh, they're going to solve this press, it would appear. Turner crosses over on Gonzalez, and Echionia and uh, Gonzalez now double the ball. Waterman has it. Turner looking to race and get it away from Waterman, who <laughs> is anxious to get it back to Turner, does so. Now Taylor and Gonzalez, and here's the steal by uh, Griffin, and Gonzalez will pull from three, and he missed it a little long, and Richie Williams gets the rebound, has it poked away by Taylor out, so it'll be Manhattan basketball to the right of their own basket. Three seconds off the shot clock. A minute eight to play. St. Peter's down by 11. Gonzalez had to take the three there. Struggling from the field. Three of ten today. One of five from three-point range in his first game against the Jaspers pressure. Taylor fouls. Xavier Turner as Turner looked to uh, work it out of the backcourt. 105 to play. Turner has 18 points and he's 8 of 10 from the line. I guess, Chris, there's, uh, it's pretty difficult to replicate this sort of pressure in practice when uh, you're not a team that looks to, to play this way, so it's maybe not in your DNA to, 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 to be able to just transfer what happens in practice to what Manhattan does. Absolutely. I think that's part of the frustration on the coaching staff side of it is that you tell the players this is going to happen, this is what they're going to do. A few guys have experienced when a couple of your important players haven't, you can't do it in practice. So you can put players in the right position, but until you experience it, it's a whole different ball game. Heel of the rim for uh, Griffin on the three, but there's a doe with two rebounds, the second one proves true. 68-57, Manhattan 11 point lead. 48 seconds on the game clock, 24 on the shot clock. And it's Capuano, Williams. St. Peter's uh, electing not to uh, commit the foul early in the possession, so you would figure they'll uh, hope for the steal here somewhere along the line. Seven seconds to shoot. Here's the drive by Williams. Jump pass left corner. Crawford will shoot the three, and it hits the side of the backboard, and the shot clock has expired, but only 21.6 left. So the Peacocks going to fall to 8-11, and 2-6 in Mac play. Have to travel down to Ryder on Friday. Ryder has a game in between. They play at Fairfield. Gonzalez behind the back now. Crossover to the right. His pull-up misses off the rim. Crawford for Manhattan. Hands to Nehemiah Mack, and that's going to do it. You can see Gonzalez had a good look there, but today it looks like the ball drifting left out of his hand, even though the rotation was good. So, so Coach Don and Coach Massiello shake hands at midcourt as Manhattan defeats St. Peter's 68-57. to Well, it was all about the second half. St. Peter's had a 29-28 lead at the interval, but then outscored in the second half to lead to the result 68 to uh, 57 and the second consecutive home defeat also uh, for St. Peter's as Chris mentioned they dropped to two and six in the league which is uh, going to uh, push them into the bottom third of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference while Manhattan improves to five and three which uh, for the moment leaves them tied with Niagara for the uh, fourth spot. And we've got Matt Henry, assistant coach, uh, working his way over to uh, join us here uh, on the post game. And Matt, uh, is it one of those situations where you don't don't really see teams in your league do what Manhattan does defensively, and at some point they wear you down? I don't think so so much. I think I don't think it was a wear down because we had 11 uh, turnovers in the first half. Right? It's like. I don't know what we finished. What did we finish with? About 20? 22. Yeah, so like we were right on par. Um, I think the missing shots in the beginning of the first half kind of creates a little bit of a mental um, effect maybe on the defensive end. 
But I don't think it's like the cumulative effect of, of, of the pressure. I think it was we did a lot of things that we weren't supposed to do and on offense, but leaving our feet and throwing moving passes and, and that sort of thing. And some of that we were, you know, we had concerns going in because we had so many guys that had not played against them. You go back and watch the films from last year, there's like guys that knew exactly what to do, the pace to play, how to handle the pressure, and we were unaffected. And immediately, right away, we were affected by it in just very careless kind of ways. Um, I, and I think that's the biggest thing. You talk about the moving passes, a couple of floaters gave Manhattan opportunity to take charges. They must have taken about six or seven. Yeah, I think there was four or five at half. It might have been more than six or seven, too. Right, it was just like not, not jump stopping, right, not getting set to pass. And it's something we pounded for the last two days on film and in, in practice, and we weren't able to execute it, which ultimately comes down to, like, you know, executing or not executing. So certainly frustrating because – the blueprint is there when you're staying on your feet and not turning the ball over and ball faking. And a couple of things you have to do against that pressure. I'm sure you shared it with the guys. you got to maintain your dribble. I know it's hard. And then when you're double teamed, someone has to come back and create a passing angle. It seemed like at times it wasn't happening. Yeah, and I think there were a few of those instances for sure. I think there were more instances where it was like, I'm fine. There's the guy there, and I throw it at his toes. Right. Or... I'm fine, there's a guy there, and I travel before I can get it out. And then the moving ones and the charges. So I, I, I think it was less like the structural of like, hey, we, you should have been in this spot. There are a few of those for sure. But I think it was much more about like the execution of the structural, which, you know, what Start, are you going to do? Started the second half, hurt you again. Ryder, they were able to get Jordan Allen going in the beginning of the ball game on Thursday night. Today, you don't score a field goal until 10:47 was left in the half. So right, we just we couldn't we had some good shots. Nick, Namdi, Sam had good shots some around the basket, stood open threes, and they didn't go in and that's where I think all of a sudden now they're playing off of misses, you know, and and, and running into offense and they hit a couple threes and it just it um it can escalate on you. But we have to make shots. We have to make shots at home in particular. Especially in the first half we turned it over, but we made enough shots and we were tight enough defensively where we could absorb all that. In the second half, we still, same turnover rate, but we, uh, we couldn't absorb it because we weren't making shots and we weren't tight enough defensively. About the nine-minute mark, you started the press. You were able to turn them over. You got it into single digits. Yeah, and, and, and we just couldn't. So, you know, it was like it was two for two basically every time, right? We could score. We were obviously were better offensively playing on the front foot, but then we were just kind of fouling a little bit or giving them, you know, exposing ourselves and, and – giving up baskets and it was basically just an even game from there but you know after we got it you know we reeled it in six points or so and then it was even at the 10 10 point mark and, and that was it so now you're in a position in the league that you certainly don't desire it looks like a bottom third but still 10 games to play so uh what's the mindset from here yeah i mean i, I think it's just can try and continue to get better each game we've played really well for long stretches of games but we rider we had kind of the middle of the second half and today we had the beginning of the second half where we just don't play well and we got to put together 40 minutes and probably also like increase the first half we probably should have been up the way we defended we probably should have met more if we had not turned the ball over the way we did. Uh, so it's just, you know, trying to get some consistency, uh, which is always a challenge. All right, Matt. Well, yep. we appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, guys. Right, we'll see you again Thank on you. Tuesday. All right, Matt Henry, the uh, assistant coach for St. Peter's College, and uh, his first two responses uh, really were exactly what you had said. Uh, it's uh, Part of it was tough replicating what they do in practice, but even more so, the fact that there were uh, many players on the floor who haven't experienced the Manhattan Press. Well, and I think lesson learned for the next game, but you notice Manhattan, at the very end, they put token pressure just to make sure they didn't foul and take some time off the clock. But that's the way Manhattan's going to play from their perspective. Hey, we wore you down. We created turnovers. We made you uncomfortable. We're going to do it again the next time we play. So Gonzalez and Turner... Devontae Turner, the two big players for St. Peter's, who they have the ball in their hands so much. But you also have to remember, it was a red shirt year last year for Cameron Jones. He was handling the ball at times. So you hope that you can learn from this experience. But part of it, Coach talked about making open shots, but Manhattan doesn't let you shoot comfortable shots. 
So it's not even if they're there, the threat of the closeout, the threat of someone contesting the shot, maybe getting you across the arm. There's physical play there, and they had things their way, especially in the beginning part of the second half. Right, let's go over the scoring totals uh, first uh, for Manhattan, leading the way and leading all scorers. Xavier Turner, well-deserved, 10 of 12 for the foul line. He finished with 20, 4 of 6 for the field, and also had 10 assists. Comment? Well, he's an excellent player. You look at the numbers last year, he had more of a free reign, and he was able to put up huge numbers. He's a guy that you can count on. Transferred here from Ball State, averaged 15 points a game a season ago. He can distribute, he can handle. He's a very good player, and he stepped up today when he was called upon. So doing a bit of everything. I'm sure you'd like to see that turnover number go down. But, you know, the Pe Peacocks were playing physically as well. It was really the offense to start the second half. St. Peter's, again, didn't have a field goal for over nine minutes to start the half, and you're not going to win many ball games like that. St. Peter's end up 7 of 25 from the field in the second half and 2 of 13 from three-point range. And you have to give Manhattan credit from the foul line, 20 of 22. So when the Peacocks were getting a little bit of hope, the Jaspers were able to knock down their free throws for the season, shooting at 67%. Richie Williams had uh, 14 points. Uh, three rebounds, two assists, the uh, leading score for the Jaspers, matching his uh, per-game total on the point chart. Uh, Zane Waterman, 13 points, and uh, for the free throw line, four of four. Also, eight rebounds, and he was three of four from behind the arc. Ten points for Paulie Polycap. He was six for six from the line. Also, six rebounds. He fell out of the game. Uh, Nehemiah Mack, three points. Also, three for Aaron Walker, Jr., Calvin Crawford, and a bucket for Thomas Capuano for St. Peter's. Samuel Lado uh, led the way. He had 17 points, 10 rebounds, a pair of assists, uh, 6 of 12 for the field, 5 of 6 for the line. Uh, Namdi Inecionia, 8 points, uh, 3 rebounds. Nick Griffin, team's leading scorer. Uh, another uh, uh, poor shooting uh, day for Nick. A bit of inconsistency, 2 of 10. And uh, nine of those ten shots from behind the arc. He had seven. Devontae Turner with seven. Elijah Gonzalez with seven and four assists. Cameron Jones, five. Uh, Mamadou Njai, three. And Quinn Taylor also with three. Well, you know, obviously a difficult task, but we talked about Gonzalez and Turner. And just looking at the numbers, they combined for 11 of the 22 St. Peter's giveaways. So... You learn from this experience. More importantly, I think the Peacocks need to just really regroup and refocus for the game down at Ryder. That's going to be a tough one. Ryder can really score the basketball. The Peacocks were able to pretty much match him. You talked about the final numbers from the game on Thursday night. Ryder, very big up front, athletic. The Peacocks got an early foul trouble in that ball game. You really have to box out and team rebound. So it's going to be a challenging rest of the season for St. Peter's, but Coach Dunn has been through these Mac wars many times, and they'll, they'll get it together, you think, and hopefully they'll play, be playing their best basketball at the end of the season. Well, that'll do it for uh, from us, uh, for us from uh, the Anatelli Center. Manhattan improving to 10-10 and 10 overall. They are 5-3 and three in the Mac, while St. Peter's drops to 8 up, 11 down, 2-6 and six in the Mac. Your final score, Manhattan 68 St. Peter's 57 for Chris Radicke. I'm Glenn Crooks. Have a great day, everybody, on uh, YouTube.com and the Peacocks Network.com.